Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to our uh, training training part two. Okay. Yeah. Um. Today uh, I'll be your speaker. Uh, my name is Tran. Uh. I'm I'm actually a senior and dealer marketing executive for Philip Futures lah. Okay. Uh. Before I start the webinar, right? Can I do a quick sound check? Uh. If all of you can hear me loud and clear, okay. Uh. Please type yes in the chat box. Yeah, if you can hear me loud and clear, uh, please type yes in the chat box. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so uh, this will be our training clinic part two. So previously, uh, two weeks, uh, three weeks ago, we already done the training clinic part one, where I introduced to you on the uh, basic mechanism of uh, uh, crude oil futures. Lah. So something like margin, how to calculate your profit and loss, and all these basic terminologies lah. okay so if you miss out the trading training part one you can actually go to uh, our youtube page where you can view again the training clinic part one and also if you wish to have the slides for training clinic part one then uh, you can email to us as well lah. okay so uh, let's proceed with the uh today's webinar so uh, I hope everyone everyone is able to learn something new today and uh, if you're already trading the crude oil futures or planning to trade the crowd futures, it will be a good uh, opportunity not to miss on uh, today knowledge sharing. Okay, so uh, before I start off, just a quick disclaimer. So whatever, present, uh, whatever is presented to you today in this webinar is basically uh, is solely for education purpose only. It doesn't uh, constitute a buy or sell call. Okay, so uh, wherever investment are subjected to risk and a uh, client always have to make a have to consult their advice advisor before uh, investing into any investment product okay so uh, before i start off uh, i would like to introduce uh, our company philip futures to all of you for those of you uh, that have not heard of philip futures before or first time joining this webinar uh, we are actually a derivatives broker okay we are actually a wholly owned subsidiary of philip capital holdings slam Brahat. We are incorporated on 7 October 1995. So we have more than 30 years of history in uh, Malaysia currently. So as you can see on the map, these are some of the branches uh, of Philip Future branches around Malaysia. Lah. So we have a branch in Penang, uh, KL is our HQ, at Jalan of Kwansing, and Kota Damansara branch in Selangor. Then also you have Malacca branch. Then there's a uh, two branch in Johor, which is uh, Taman Molek and Taman Sutra. Then on East Malaysia, we have a uh, Kuching branch, Cebu branch, and two more new branches, which is uh, Cebu branch and Kota Kinara Palu branch. Okay. So if you are from this area, uh, we will, uh, our representative from all over Malaysia will be able to contact you. Okay. So uh, another thing about Philip Futures, actually, we are the trading participant of Busa Malaysia Derivatives Brahat, and also a clearing participant of Busa Malaysia Derivatives Clearing Brahat. So what it allows us to do is we have license to uh, uh, direct your trade to the Busan Malaysia Derivatives Exchange, okay, and also clear off the trade, or uh, clear off the trade at the end of the day. Then we are fully regulated by Securities Commission, and we are the holder of the Capital Market Service license, lah. Okay. Then uh, this one of our achievement, achievement last year, or uh, at the Busan Excellent Awards 2020, where we uh, win three particular prize, which is uh, best overall derivatives best retail derivatives trading participant and also best institutional derivatives trading participant. So we'd like to extend our gratitude to all of our clients for supporting us. Thank you. Okay, so uh, at Philip Futures, we provide uh, futures from various exchanges around the world. Okay, so we have our very own Busan Malaysia, Singapore Exchange, Hong Kong Exchange, Japan Exchange. And then in US, we have uh, two exchanges, which is uh, the CME Group, Consists of uh, Chicago Board of Trade, COMEX, NYMEX, and the ICE Exchange. And also, lastly, the Euro Exchange. Lah. So, if you are interested to trade uh, futures outside Malaysia, actually, you can trade through us. Then, these are some of the products that we offer. Lah. So, we, we basically cover two derivatives products, which is futures and contract for difference. So, futures, we offer various types of futures, index futures, metal futures, agricultural futures, energy futures, interest futures. Yeah, so this 
uh, these are uh, and most of the popular products in the futures market we actually provide. Then other than that is the CFD. CFD stands for contract for different. So our CFD product consists of three, which is uh, the top hundred shares from Bursa Malaysia, shares from uh, New York Stock Exchange, and also Nasdaq shares. And recently we also launched the uh, index uh, index CFD, which is the US index CFD. Okay, if you are interested, you can find more details on our website. Or our alternatively can contact any of our representative. Okay, so uh, why choose daily features? So some of the services that we we'll provide include uh, 24 hours booking and execution support. So this is quite important to clients that trade the night market. So in case when night time you need uh, you have some issue, maybe issue with your trade, or you need to ask for advice, then you can always call into our dealing desk. It's 24 hour. Then we also provide the latest market news to all of our clients. Okay, so uh, every morning we will send out daily report on the local market and afternoon will be the uh, daily report for the foreign market. Okay, to your email every uh, every working day, okay, every market day. Then we also provide advisory service. So in terms of advisory service, uh, you can always contact our representative to ask about what's going on in the market. So, so to give you a, uh, uh, hint uh, where on the market direction where it's going to go. Then lastly, we also uh, provide a wide range of products like as mentioned previously. Okay, so uh, at Philip Futures, we invite you to learn with us. So we provide free one-to-one -one coaching session. So after this uh, webinar, if you feel like you want additional uh, coaching on trading, if you're already current trading or you haven't started trading, you want to do an appointment with us, you can always get a free coaching from us. Lah. Then we also provide free seminar and webinars. Lah. So this is something, uh, this, like this webinar is free. We don't charge for anything for our seminars and webinars. And lastly, our company is free. Lah. So there's no like CDS fees or accounting fees. It's totally free. Lah. Okay. So these are some of the social media channels that uh, we, we are on. So we actually are on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and also Telegram. Lah. So for Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, just search Philip Futures number. Lah. And for Telegram, you just search uh, Philip Futures. At our Telegram page, uh, as a Telegram broadcast group, we broadcast the uh, latest market news and also the uh, end of day prices. Lah. So do check out our Telegram broadcast group. Okay, lastly, uh, these are some of the contacts of uh, all our branches in Malaysia. Okay, so I'm actually based in Kota Damansar branch. So we, uh, my phone, uh, my office phone number will be 0392122820. Or alternatively, we can email to uh, my branch email at pskd at poem.com.my. Then alternatively, you can also search our web, uh, search for our website at www.philipfutures.com.my and also our Facebook page as well. Okay. So without further ado, let's uh, jump into our today uh, today webinar. Uh, today webinar will be on fundamental analysis for crude oil trading. Okay. These are some of the uh, area which I'm going to cover shortly in our webinar. So from time to time, for each session, I will make a quick pause and to take off uh, and to clear off some questions from all of you. Okay. So feel free, if you have any question, you just type in the chat box, then uh, I will attend you at certain uh, at each section break. Okay, so these are some of the things that I'll cover today. So basically, I'm going to uh, explain to you guys what is fundamental analysis. Okay, so then the other thing is will be supply and demand for crude oil. So in fundamental analysis, the most important thing is supply and demand. Okay, what are, what are the key indicators and what are the key uh, factors that going to affect the supply and demand. Then also last, lastly, other factors that also affecting the crude oil prices. Then how, lastly, how to apply this fundamental analysis in your trading. Okay, with real life example. Okay, so let's start off uh, the first section, which is what is fundamental analysis. So basically fundamental analysis is the process of determining the model price of futures contract. Now or in the future, using macroeconomic data microeconomic data and also industrial financial condition. So basically, when you are doing fundamental analysis from a trader's standpoint or from an investor standpoint, you want to ask a few questions to yourself. So where will supply and demand of this particular commodity will be, move, uh, will be moving? Okay, so basically, let's say you're trading crude oil, you want to know where the supply and demand will move in the future. Then when you're trading the particular crude oil, you are uh, we will, you will have the price right and the current price. So the thing is, what is the price at a later date? Because at today's price, if you enter at today's price, you won't get a profit. 
you only will gain a profit or a loss when the price moves up or down. Okay, so you want to know how will the price move in the future using fund analysis. And the next thing will be is the futures contract value price today? Okay, so this question will be uh, you need to answer by wondering is this the correct price of the uh, futures contract now, or has the uh, has the futures value price? I mean, overbought or oversold? Okay, these are some of the questions you're going to ask the seller when doing fundamental analysis. Okay, so before we jump into the fundamentals of crude oil, so I will already highlight again that uh, fundamental analysis is actually uh, looking at the big picture as the as uh, as the title suggests today. Okay, so when you're using uh, fundament, fundamental analysis, you have to uh, usually we use it to look at the bigger picture and it's for more uh, and it's more for a lot uh, mid to a long term approach. Lah, okay. If you are doing a uh, short term trading, it will be more beneficial to use technical analysis. But of course, if you are able to combine the both fundamental and technical analysis, you will definitely uh, excel in your trading. Okay. So uh, today I'm going to share you some of the basic key indicators uh, of, for trading with WTI and Brent crude oil. But before that, you need to understand the differences between WTI and Brent crude oil before we can start to look at other indicators. Okay. So uh, these are some of the char basic characteristics of the different characteristics between WTI and Brent crude oil. Uh, the title is, uh, I mean, this this is the Brent and WTI title is uh, uh, emitted. Uh, uh, the left side should be for Brent, the right side will be WTI. Okay, uh, slight typo here. Okay, so this is a correct one. Uh. So we want to look, we want to know the characteristic of the brand crude oil and WTI crude oil, how these two products differ, then you will get an idea how to use fundamental analysis to trade these two products. Okay, so first of all, we must know the origin of this brand and WTI crude oil. So brand crude oil is actually based mostly in Europe country, which is produced mainly in Europe country near the North Sea region between the uh, Shetland Island and Norway. Okay. Most of the petroleum, uh, most of the production, the are uh, based around there. Then for the WTI crude oil, it's mainly US, so it's mainly all US oil oil field. And then the uh, name for the WTI is also the shale oil, lah, Okay. Then benchmark country, benchmark country stands which country usually use the this oil as the benchmark for their oil prices. So uh, in for brand crude oil. The most of the country like Russia, North and West Africa and Asia use brand crude oil as the benchmark. Okay, so when they are referring, so when they are uh, when they are say, uh, referring, what's the current oil price? They always refer to brand crude oil. Okay, then for US it's slightly different. For US, uh, for US the benchmark product is WTI. So when you ask, when you go to US, you ask the people there, uh, what's the current price of oil? They will refer to the WTI oil. Okay, so when you are in certain countries you need to know what is the benchmark, what is the main benchmark uh, crude oil that they use in a particular country. Lah, okay. Then the next thing will be demand. Okay. Where, where, where are the region where most demand of these two oil will be? So the demand for brand crude oil is mainly centered around Europe region and Asia region. Okay. Then for WTI, of course, it's produced in US. It's definitely the main demand will be their own country, which is US. Lah, okay. Then next thing will be the production area. So production area usually uh, will affect the cost, lah, cost of producing the uh, brand crude oil and the WTI crude oil. So the brand crude oil actually is produced uh, near the sea. Okay. Then for the WTI is produced near uh, landlocked areas. Landlocked areas means uh, mainly on the land. Lah. So for brand crude oil, the production cost will be slightly lower. Okay. Slightly lower because it's produced near the sea. Once they produce finish near the sea, they can straight away put in to the cargo and uh, to the cargo vessel and straight away transport to the uh, to the country that needed lah. Then for the PDF, yeah, it's a bit troublesome because it's produced on land. Then the cost will be higher. 
once you produce, you just have to transport it to the port only that can ship to uh to the exporting countries. So the usually WTI will have a higher cost like compared to bank crude oil. But also, of course, it depends on the technologies as well of the particular country and also their scale, their economy of scale. But uh, this is a general idea like, on how, uh, the basic, uh, based on the production area, how, how is the cost like. Okay, then for brand crude oil, brand crude oil futures are traded on the ice exchange. Brand crude oil futures actually are mostly traded on the ice exchange. Like. It's a cash sector, like, so there's no delivery location. Cash sector means at the end of the day, at the end of the expiry, the contract will just cash at the main, main, meaning to say that whatever profit and loss you have will be realized like. you don't have to go to deliver the product but for wti crude oil it's a uh, physical delivery meaning to say you will have to deliver uh the at the end of the expiry like, you have to deliver the wti crude oil in barrels based on the contract to uh to the uh designated port, which is in Cushing, Oklahoma. So it's in US. Lah. So if you are trading WTI crude oil from Malaysia, we uh, we usually will have you will monitor your position and will have you close your position one day before the first notice day. So first, first notice day is something sort of like an X day, okay, where you will have to compulsory opt in for physical delivery. So we won't let a normal retail client or any client outside of Malaysia, uh, outside of US to to participate in the uh, physical delivery. It's just not feasible uh, and so the cost is quite high. Okay, then the last thing would be the controlling organization. So for brand crude oil, it's mainly controlled by the OPEC. Uh. Okay, uh, later I'll cover a uh, bit on the uh, on OPEC, like what is OPEC and uh, what are the percentage of uh, production in the OPEC country. Uh. So it will give you an idea uh, which country is uh, is the highest producer and also will give you an idea uh, how the current economic situation affects the uh, brand crude oil prices. Then for WTI crude oil, WTI crude oil is very straightforward because it's produced in US. So the main uh, controlling organization will be the US Department of Energy. So the US yeah, Department of Energy will control the uh, supply. Okay, it will allow a uh, producer to produce how much in a particular month. So uh, they will plan. Uh, they will plan ahead. Okay, so uh, for these two brand crude oil and WTI oil is uh, quite different in terms of character characteristic la, because as you can see uh, on this slide, uh, a lot of things are quite different. Okay, so these are some of the things that you need to understand and you take note before you can jump into the fundamental analysis. Okay, so uh, some of the basic uh, factors that I mean, general factors that uh, affect energy futures, like in but uh, in general, maybe uh, energy futures could be crude oil, could be natural gas, could be gasoline, and so on. Uh, any energy future, there are a few general factors which is supply and demand. Okay, so supply and demand will definitely affect the prices. If supply, so based on economic theory, if supply is too high, then prices go down. If supply is too low, then prices go up. Then for demand, if demand is high, prices will go up. If demand is low, prices go down. Okay, so. It can be uh, because this kind of economic choice can be quite complicated to you. For today's webinar, I will simplify to you. You only need to look for a few indicators and a few uh, things, few items for you to use it effectively in your trading. Okay, I already simplified to you, so you have to wait for uh, my presentation later, my sharing later. Okay, then the next thing will be build and drawdown. So build and drawdown mainly uh, build and drawdown of inventory. So there are uh, you need to understand why certain uh, why the inventory will build up. That means why inventory will decrease uh, increase at the end of the month. Then draw down why the inventory will draw down. Means why the inventory will decrease at the end of the month. So this kind of thing, uh, once the uh, economic the data from the uh, market provider release, okay, you can actually just search it on the uh, uh, website, the all the all those news website like Bloomberg, Market Watch you know, website, okay. If you don't really have to uh, search it so in detail from the uh, market provider website. Uh, this kind of thing uh, can be searched from the internet. Okay. But the main idea, you need to see the trend, the larger trend, because fundamental analysis, we are looking at the big picture. Okay. Then the last thing will be seasonality. So seasonality means like in one particular year, okay, in which month, usually the uh, energy futures will be higher. 
so like certain a uh, certain times of year like maybe summer uh winter then how the how the demand and supply will look like uh. so i'll cover later in my presentation later okay okay so the first one the first uh data the key economic data that you have to sorry key data that you have to look at would be uh eia crude oil inventories so eia crude oil uh, eia stands for the energy uh and energy okay uh administrative uh okay, it doesn't U.S. Energy Information Administrative, yeah, bit uh, because the name is quite long, I, I forget. So uh, the Energy Information Administrative of U.S. lah. Okay. So every every Wednesday night, okay, every Wednesday night, this report will be released lah. They will release a weekly report, okay, on the crude oil inventories, bit for the last for the last two weeks. I uh, mean based on the last two weeks lah. Okay. So let's say uh, today, let's say today is Wednesday night. They will release. Uh, they will release the two weeks ago inventory. So it's sort of like lagging integrated. But overall, we want to see what's the general trend of this EIA crude oil inventory. Okay. So for so uh, how we're going to use this information is if an inventory increases, typically WTI prices will go down because an inventory represents supply. So when supply, which is your end inventory, increases, then typically WTI prices will go down. Okay. Then when end inventory decreases, means your supply reduces, then your WTI prices will go up. Okay. So as you can see on the screen here, uh, based on the last few months, I mean uh, past two years, we can see that uh, the inventory actually is coming down. Right? So we can that's that's the reason why the WTI prices keep going up because end inventory is coming down. Okay. So this is a larger trend. On larger trend uh, over the uh, from 2000 to 2022 okay uh, for this information right you actually just can just go to website like investing.com you just go to their economic calendar economic calendar then you search for this EIA crude oil inventories okay so then you just click subscribe or just uh, tick their tick their bell, uh, bell just to notify you when the uh, data is released lah, okay so this one will, will, will sort of uh, if you are doing intraday trading, it will affect the price for the particular day. And if you are doing uh, more like mid-term to long-term trading, we are going to hold one month, two months, or one year. Okay, then this one will definitely be something you want to look out for. Okay, so uh, just to show you how the price has trend based on the things I mentioned, uh, based on the current economic theory, uh, based on the current crude oil inventories. Lah. Okay, so uh, on the upper image, I will highlight the box where a uh, clear trend of the uh, crude oil inventory is coming down okay so as mentioned previously the crude oil inventory is coming down then at the same period uh in the price chart okay this is the price chart expert from our trading platform Philip nova okay you can see the price trending up okay it's trending up of course you are from time to time you will see wave like, like up down up down but overall the price is trending upward okay so this is how you can use this eia crude oil inventories to give you a a general idea of where the bigger trend is actually moving to okay then the next one uh another inventory provider market data will be the api lah. okay the api uh the api stands for uh petroleum institute uh, something like that, but the name again Okay, American Petroleum Institute. Yeah, so the API stands for the American Petroleum Institute. So it's another body also from America which produce a crude oil inventories market data, uh, a crude oil inventories uh, data as well. But this one uh, doesn't affect market as, as much as the EIA because usually government, uh, the, most of the producer and also the uh, pump, uh, sorry, uh, the crude oil traders will refer to EIA. API is an alternative one. Okay. Uh, it's not so uh, it's not the influence is not so huge on the market but it will definitely uh, give some short-term volatility on the price of the crude oil price on the particular day when the api crude oil inventory is released 
Okay, same as the EIA crude oil inventories, if N inventory increases, the WTI prices will go up. If N inventory decreases, the WTI prices will go, uh, will go up. Sorry, uh, inventory increases, then price go down. Inventory decreases, then price go up. It's the same thing as the uh, EIA crude oil inventories for this API. Okay, so in this, uh, this is the weekly API, uh, API crude oil inventory. Okay, so um, uh, I would like to show you that the, based on the last three uh, announcements of the API, how the prices, how the prices has changed, how the prices has changed. Okay, so there's based on last week. So based on uh, last week will be number three, then uh, two weeks ago will be number two, and uh, three weeks ago one will be number one. Okay, so one, two, three, just remember this. Then on the next slide, I'll show you the event. Okay, so for number one. Number one, right? Number one, we see the uh, there's a build up in inventory. So build up inventory means we expect the WTI prices to go down. Okay. So there's actually something going on in the market on uh, number one. Okay. So you can see on this uh, price chart here on number one, actually prices smash down. He tried to go up and smash down and form a sort of like a uh, hammer candle here. Okay. You can see clearly. So it definitely affect the uh, short-term volatility of the market on particular day. Okay. Then for number two, we saw a different situation where there is a huge drawdown of inventory. Okay. Huge drawdown inventory means the WTI prices will go up. Okay. So now let's see number two on the particular day when number two was released. So when two was released, the price actually go up on the particular day. Okay. You can see here two it goes up. So it shows you that uh, this Kind of data actually can be used for the trading. And lastly, number three, after the drawdown on the previous week, we have a build up again. So we will expect price to go down. So let's see what happened on the, on the number three where the announcement was announced. You can see the price just shut down. The price will go down because of this API on the particular day. So it will affect the short term trend on for the, especially when you're doing intraday trading, you have to look out for this kind of. Uh, API uh, for this API quick oil inventory. Okay, so uh, so far so far this is on, uh, on some of the main uh, indicator you can use in your trading. Okay, then the next thing we'll we'll look at is Baker huge oil rig count. Okay, so uh, what is oil rig count? So basically, it, basically it refers to how many. Uh, it basically it refers to the supply of the uh of the crude oil, in, uh, the WTI crude oil in the market. So because this Baker Hooch there, uh, every week they will, uh, every week they will, they will uh, produce data on how many uh, oil active oil rig in US, okay, in every region of US. So this data will be released on Friday night around 11:30 uh, p.m. Okay, this data is released on Friday night around 11:30 p.m. Okay. Uh, because it's already Friday, <laughs> already Friday. So right, the uh the influence is not so huge on the market. Okay, but will definitely produce some short term volatility on the Friday night. Okay, uh especially when the oil rate count suddenly jump a big number. Okay, like maybe more 10, 20, 10, 20 is considered huge. If like if like if as highlighted here, it's only plus minus eight. It's not so huge, not so big impact on the market. Anything is a double figure could be very could have a, a larger impact on the market, on the crude oil prices on the particular day. So when you're trading at Friday night, you have to pay attention to this data. Okay. But overall, you want to use this for the trend, the larger trend of the crude oil prices. Okay. So how you can use this data is if oil rate count increases, okay, typically uh, we can expect the WTI prices to increase in the future. Okay. So because when only when because uh the future expectation of the uh TRI prices is highly in the future, then only those producers want to activate their oil rate again to produce oil. Okay. If the WTI prices is low in the future, then this producer they won't want to even touch their oil rate because it's not this not pro, uh, profitable. It's not profitable if the WTI price is low. Okay, they cannot make money. So that's why only when they expect when uh WTI prices to go up, only they will start activate against their oil rate. Okay. So in US, during the uh, crude oil crash previously, there is a lot of 
uh, idle oil rig, and this oil rig, they are not using, just stand, stand by there doing nothing. Okay, so, so this is something that we can take note on. Okay, so you can, these are one, uh, these are on the screen here is the extract of the report. Lah. Okay, but you don't really have to go to Baker Shields website to uh, check out this report. You can actually just, same thing, you can go to investing.com. Okay, so just go to the academic calendar again and look for Friday night around 11 p.m. leisure time. Lah. And look for uh, what is the change in bigger, uh, biggest huge or income. Okay, so uh, based on this data, for, uh, this is released weekly, so based on last week data on Friday actually increased by eight. Lah. So we can expect, so generally the producer expect the WRPI prices to go higher. Okay, this is the uh, or count. Okay, so um, we can see the trend is going higher and higher. Based from, uh, this for a period of uh, around one year. Okay, you can see the trend is going high, higher, and that's why uh, the WTI prices keep on going up. So previously, last year, I think around this time was around 30, 40, 30, 40 USD. Now it's already gone up to uh, 100 plus USD. If we exclude the event from Russia in uh, Russia war, Russia Ukraine war, is it? You at least uh, before the Russian Ukraine war, it's actually at 90 USD. So we actually gone up from 30 plus USD to 90 plus USD. If you are a positional trader, meaning to say you trade the WTI crude oil on the long term, you actually can make a lot of money lah, based on this kind of info, based on this kind of fundamental analysis to uh, that you can utilize to forecast the long, long longer trend of the uh, WTI crude oil. Okay. So then the next thing will be uh, WTI seasonality. Okay. So seasonality uh, refers to uh, our one particular season, uh, on one particular time of the year, during which month WTI crude oil usually pro, uh, has higher, will be higher prices. Okay. Seasonality main, mainly due to demand. Okay. As a, uh, because this seasonality is very close to the weather condition. So you can see, the, uh, the prices are usually higher during the month of June to October. Okay, you can see uh, it produced almost a 14% return, 14% uh, return from average, 14% like return from June to October. Okay, so it means to say, and also this month correlates with the summer, summer month in US. Okay, so this is when the time where economic activity is higher and mobility is higher. Mobility means there are more people traveling around and the industrial economy activity or as a, at a peak during the summer. Okay. So and that is why the WTI crude oil usually is higher during the uh during these few months like June to October. So when you are trading the crude oil in June or October, okay, you can pay pay particular attention on the uh short term trend of the uh WTI crude oil based on this seasonality chart. Okay. Then uh, during winter month when it starts around uh, November to February, okay. During November to February is the winter month, you can expect the uh, economic activity and also the industrial activity to be lower as compared to the summer. Okay, then you will see there's a drop in crude oil prices. Lah. Okay. Uh, one thing you know, some may want to argue that uh, because it's winter, then there's more power demand. Okay, so just uh, it is a totally different case because the WTI uh mainly to mainly uh use for use as uh used to produce gasoline, uh, used to produce uh, petroleum, which is mainly for uh, vehicle purpose, uh, and also all those uh, cargo, and also ship and so on. For, for uh, during winter, you might want to look at other energy futures like the power futures, or maybe something like the electricity futures, if you want to uh, le leverage like, on this winter, where demand will be higher for, uh, to, demand for energy will be higher to generate uh, warm, generate heat. Okay, but for the WTI futures, it will be lower demand. It will be lower prices lah, during uh, the period of November to February lah, during uh, that month of year. Okay, so uh, as you can see, these are some of the statistic uh, at the bottom part. It's some of the statistic on demand leverage over the past twenty years. Okay, so this chart here actually. Uh, is a compilation of all the average average return of the PTI crude oil over the past 20 years. Okay. 
uh, if you want this, uh, if you guys want to request for this slide, actually, uh, after this, we will send, send an email. Email, uh, sorry, you can actually contact us through email. We will send you the slide for your reference, or you can rewind the video at our YouTube page. Okay, so there are something you need to take note whenever you are filling the WGI crude oil. Okay, so since so far we have covered the WGI crude oil so far, uh, the fundamentals of the WGI crude oil so far, because WGI is a relatively easier, relatively easier uh, crude oil product to trade because it is produced in US and the main demand comes from US. So there's only one country that, uh, one country that govern the whole production and demand. Okay, of course you got there's, there's export to export to uh, other countries as well, but the main demand for WTI crude oil is based in the US. So it's easier to do a fundamental analysis for the WTI crude oil. For brand crude oil, okay, it's slightly more difficult because uh there is a lot of country that produce uh produce brand crude oil. You can see on the screen here there's uh OPEC country that's actually almost more than uh almost 10 countries that produce crude oil. So it's very hard to control the supply and also uh, look at the demand for this uh, for this for this uh, for this brand crude oil okay but I want to highlight to you that's actually a, as I mentioned previously the brand crude oil is controlled by our organization I mean the supply is controlled by the organization known as the APEC lah, okay okay so uh, when we want to because this OPEC, they actually consists of 13 member countries, lah, mainly uh, mostly Middle East countries where they will, they are the uh, member country where they going they form a committee a uh, committee known as the OPEC to call, control the production and also the uh, to to foster the uh, prosperity of oil producer in their country, lah, okay. So this OPEC they will meet every uh, early first week of the month to discuss how much production they want to produce uh, for that particular month. Okay, so whenever OPEC meets you, you for that particular week, if you are holding a position, uh, I mean a mid-term to long-term position, you have to be particularly careful. You are doing it intraday trading, it should be all right because uh, you are just mainly uh, get, getting the short-term, uh, the small re smaller returns, so not, not much effect. But if you are doing mid-term and short-term trading, when OPEC meet on that particular week, you have to be more careful. Okay, make sure you put a stop loss lah. So uh, uh, the OPEC meeting for last month in uh, for last month in March, right? So uh, yeah, for for this for this month March, already they already meet in second of March. Okay, so so based on the OPEC meeting, after all those uh, ar argument and so on, discussion and so on. They agree to adjust our money production uh, to sorry to increase money production by 0.4 million barrel per day. Okay? Increase their money production by 2.4 million barrel in April 2022. Okay. But one thing to take note, this happened before the Ukraine Russian war, okay, which I'm gonna discuss shortly in, in this table below, which I already highlighted how much Russian information, which I'm gonna show you how much they pack and so on. But the general idea for this, uh, to look at this OPEC meeting is to give you a gauge of where, uh, what is this OPEC countries are thinking, okay? What is their direction? Are they, are they uh, actually going, uh, in the direction of increasing the production or reducing the production? So when they increase production, meaning to say we expect more supply in the market, so prices will generate, uh, will generate, will, uh, will predictably come down. Okay, because supply is higher, production higher, supply higher, price come down. But if suddenly they say uh, there's too much supply in the market, then suddenly they want to reduce production. Okay, then it's a vice versa case where uh, if production reduces, supply lower, then prices will go up. Okay, so it, it really depends on what is what is uh, leaders of this OPEC are thinking. So every uh, so if you want to know when they meet, you can actually go to the OPEC website at their calendar day okay so the next meeting will be on end of this March on 31st March okay and also want to take note this meeting will be particularly important because this is the first meeting after the Russia and Ukraine war okay so you have to watch closely what this OPEC uh, meeting where what, what they're going to do about the supply for the 
it's short uh, in April, uh, April and May, like, because this month, the first month we're meeting for April, so you will be the production in May, like, okay? So you want to see what, what are they planning for May, okay? So, so far, if you search, if you just Google OPEC, you will see a lot of speculation what the OPEC would, would uh, is going to, uh, is thinking, uh, so there's no clear direction at the moment. So it's, I also couldn't say they will increase production or they reduce production, but most likely they will increase production because they need to cover the supply lost from the Russian, Russian sanction. Okay, now we're going to discuss what's the effect of this uh, Ukraine Russian war on uh, Ukraine Russian war on this uh, OPEX uh, production. Okay, as you can see on the screen here, uh, there are uh, the OPEC plus, the OPEC plus is, uh, is actually consists of OPEC, country, 10 OPEC country and also a uh, few most country, few largest uh, oil producing country, okay, which is not a non-OPEC right, on the bottom part, okay, uh, and this uh, on the right side here is a percentage, uh, the weightage of the country that produce based on the total production. Uh, on this OPEC plus, uh, OPEC 10 plus, not OPEC equal to OPEC plus. Okay, so you can see, right, Russia produced 25%, 25% British is like one quarter of the overall production of the uh, OPEC plus country. So that is the reason why when you should, uh, Russia and Ukraine will break out, okay, 25, uh, 20, we expect around 25% of the uh, Russian export of crude oil will not reach the world uh, to other country because due to sanction. Now more of the country, especially US, Europe, UK, all these countries are not buying oil from Russia. Okay, they are doing a sanction on Russia. So there is approximately, I only can estimate approximately 25% of the oil production is missing. That is the reason why uh, brand crude oil just shoot up, shoot up uh, once the war break up. Okay, so that's the reason. Uh, Okay, so then we will, we will uh, then the what is the solution? Then uh, we will have to look at uh, when OPEC plus meet on the next meeting on 31st March, okay, 31st March on the, uh, this month to see uh, what they're going to do about it. How much production they're going to increase, whether each country are able to produce enough to meet the deficit from, deficit from the uh, supply from uh, Russian Russia, okay. So this is something you have to be particular careful, okay. This on the reverse much lah. When you are trading on that week, so be extra careful there. You can expect some volatility. You can expect some volatility in that, uh, in that in during that week. Okay. So uh, then also then the next thing is, uh, we also look at we also look at the uh futures prices, future prices of the uh, crude oil. Uh, this is for brand crude oil and also WTI crude oil. Okay, so on this page is the prices of every contract month from CME exchange. CME, CME is the WTI. Uh, WTI is listed on CME exchange. Okay, just to just a bit of uh, to show you the uh, how the future price, how we refer it as the terminology. So when we say condango market, meaning to say the spot prices is lower than the future prices. Okay, what it means by continuum market is, uh, let's say we are, uh, let's say we're in April, uh, April now. If April prices is higher, uh, sorry, if April prices is lower than other month after April, May, June, July, August, and so on, is higher than current month April spot price. Now we are, we can say, we can say this is a continuum market. Okay, if for backwardation market means that spot price is higher than future prices. Meaning to say, if April is uh, is higher as compared to other forward months like May, June, July, August, and so on, okay, then we are in a backwardation market. Okay, so this will this uh, future future price of all these contract month will tell you uh, generally where the price will move in the future in the coming month. Okay, because now our price already at hundred dollar plus. So the market actually expect the price to return to normal in the future, okay? But of course, this is just the view of the market. It can change anytime, but it will give you a general direction of where the prices will, will be heading in the in the next coming month, okay? Currently, we are in a 
uh, liquidation market, uh, where spot price is higher than uh, forward market. Okay. Then this is the Brent crude oil prices uh, listed on the uh, ice exchange. Uh, okay. So it's also the same, both will have the similar trend where it's also a, currently a backwardation market, uh, okay, where the spot month price is higher compared to the forward month price. So these are something you can use. Uh, this kind of information actually can find on the exchange, uh, the exchange website. So CME website, just go to www.cme.com. Then you will see uh, the official CME website. You can just search for crude oil, crude oil, light sweet crude oil, which is another name for WPI crude oil. Then you can see uh, all these prices. Okay. But of course, uh, the prices will be uh, 10 minutes delayed. Uh. Not life prices. Life prices will have to refer to your broker, broker for life prices. Okay, then this is the ice exchange. I exchange one also saying you can go refer to their ice exchange website. Then for life prices, you will have to refer to your broker as well. Okay. Then the next thing I want to highlight is uh and on on the brand WTI spread. Okay. Uh, this is for more advanced trader. For those of you who already have experience trading uh, both brand and WTI crude oil, this is something definitely you would not want to miss out at the moment. Okay. So traditionally, uh, what is brand? Sorry, what is brand and WTI spread is meaning to say what is the difference between brand minus WTI price. Okay. So as you can, as uh, you are aware that brand and brand is always a premium to WTI. Okay. Due to the uh, due to the characteristic of brand, it is always at a premium compared to WTI. So, gen, uh, traditionally, I mean, based on historical data, it's always centered around three three dollar premium, three dollar premium. So, meaning if let's say uh, if brand is hundred dollar, usually it's supposed to be hundred minus three for ninety seven dollar for WTI. If W if brand is ninety minus three will be around eighty seven dollar for WTI. Based on historical data, lah. but but because this uh due to this uh Russian war breakout, okay, you can see the brand and the media spread premium has already widened. Okay, now it's already to nine dollars. Okay, so if you are an uh, arbitrager or you are a, a, a trader will want to leverage on this on this uh brand and the media spread, you can actually look look to uh look for short position of this uh brand on the spread spread okay because they're revived but of course not so soon we want we want to wait the world to settle but because it might continue going up it's trending up uh nicely now okay so because usually uh this kind of spread they will once everything settled down it will always re revert back to the mean the mean is uh for this spread is three around three dollar okay now it's nine dollar so you have a six dollar difference there so you have to find your right timing before you can jump into the market to trade this brand and the WTI spread. Okay. So how to trade this brand and the spread? Uh, usually how it works is if price go up too high, I mean this spread price go up too high, you your uh traders will do two things. They will short uh because brand is more expensive, they will short brand and they will long WTI uh, contract. They will short brand and they will long WTI contract. Okay. So once the so once the price revert to mean, that means uh, brand prices, brand will drop, WTI will drop slower, then you start to earn a profit from this uh, brand WTI spread. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is a general idea of how you can use this brand WTI spread for more advanced trading. Uh, okay. Okay, so far, uh, so basically that, that's all for the fundamental fundamental analysis that I will wish to cover for today. Lah. So what you have learned today is basically uh, what's fundamental analysis, then what's the difference between WTI brand. Then for fundamental of WTI, we have covered EIA inventory, API inventories, because huge audit count, and uh, fundamentals of brand will be, we will look at the OPEC plus. What the OPEC plus, the continuous, the most important is what the OPEC plus is thinking. Okay. What are they expecting to in, increase brand, uh, increase the production or reduce production? Okay. Then for both the product that we have brand, you can look at the future prices of the uh, four month contract as compared to spot month price, whether it's a condangle market or reputation market. Then lastly, 
for more advanced trader, you can actually look at that brand and FPTI spread to give you an idea uh, currently which contract is more expensive at the moment and you can look to long or short the cheaper or the more expensive contract accordingly. Or you can do a arbitrage which is uh, to enter into to long one month and short one month. Okay. Or depend on the spread. Okay, so uh so now I'm gonna uh, clear off some questions first from the from from everyone. Okay. Okay. So the first question is okay. Uh, from Nukman, from Nukman. So Nukman, how much does uh Venezuela produce, and uh is Venezuela production worth looking at? Okay, so Venezuela actually is another one of the uh large uh largest production uh, largest production country but if not mistaken is not part of the OPEC plus because as you can see here uh, there's no Venezuela here so uh, Venezuela did not want to commit to OPEC plus okay they are also one of the largest ones in terms of what is the what is the uh, percentage of Venezuela is uh, not as significant as compared to other OPEC countries uh, maybe center around uh, less than five percent uh, less than five five percent of the world production so so uh you can you if you are trading like brand crude oil you may you can actually look at what's Venezuela but overall I would re recommend you to look at OPEC plus country uh, because it give, it give you a more bigger picture of this uh controlling body of the uh control body of the OPEC okay then uh and the question will be does the Russian sanction imposed on Russia cause the crude oil price to tumble? Uh, no, actually, it's the other way, as I mentioned previously. Uh, once the sanction on Russia, once the sanction of Russia started, okay, we are we are looking at loss of 25% of the world supply. Okay, this loss of 25% will be a big headache for the OPEC country and uh, all those country exporting countries around the world. We're going to get we are going to source this 25 percent supply so every country every country now is uh, worrying whether there will be shortages of crude oil and that is the reason why crude oil prices shut up okay so another question will be when is the api data released uh api data usually release around if not mistaken it's around tuesday tuesday but tuesday around 5 30 a.m. If not mistaken, just me and ask. Let me double check. Because API is uh, released somewhere around 5 a.m. Malaysia time. So it will be slightly weird. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it's Wednesday. Wednesday 5. Wednesday 5.30 a.m. Wednesday 5.30 a.m. Then the, on the same night will be Croy Mentories at 11.30 p.m. Okay, so Wednesday, you are always for those of you who are trading on Wednesday. So the whole day we have two uh, data releasing. Uh, so you have to pay particular attention when you're trading on Wednesday. You can expect a uh, more volatility on the particular day. Uh, okay. Then uh next question will be how could we know the meeting on calendar for OPEC meeting? Uh usually they don't have a calendar. Usually they don't sorry, they, usually they don't have a calendar. But uh Usually don't kind of, but at the end of the meeting of the of the sorry at the end of the meeting in the press list they will mention the next meeting. Okay, so you just have to look out for the press release of the meeting. And so they will announce what is the outcome of the meeting. Okay, so two things you want to know after the meeting. Let's say uh, they meet on thirty first after they meet on thirty first March this coming end of this month. You want to look out two things: increase production, reduce production, and when's the next meeting. Okay, so we, uh, these are the things. Uh, these are the things that you have to pay attention to. Okay, then uh, one thing: since China has not joined the sanction, it's not perfectly all right for Russia to export to her. Okay, uh, the case of China is a bit, a bit hard uh, because due to politics. Now, China, uh, U.S. is actually pressuring China to implement sanction. That means they want China to 
implement sanction on Russia. But but China, Xi Jinping said that uh, they will not interfere with this war and or interfere with the what the Western country is doing to Russia. Okay. So as of this moment, China is still uh, ex, uh is still receiving uh production uh, is still still importing oil from Russia. Okay. But then again, the uh, but then again, China uh, import of oil is not mainly most not mostly from Russia. They mostly import from Middle East country and also US. Okay, so if they want to switch their pipeline to Russia, it would take some time. Okay, so so that the reason uh, there's no so uh, so for this crude oil price, there's not much impact. Uh, whether China will going to sanction uh, Russia or not. Okay, but it will definitely have some minor impact. So then the next question, if you create brand capital spread, do we enjoy margin credit discount? Uh, unfortunately for those trading outside of US, uh, there, there won't be any uh, there won't be any spread margin for brand of the BDI spread. So if you are trading uh, the brand of the BDI spread, we will be traded as a well right contract, meaning to say that you are long one either brand on the BTI, short either brand of the BTI, it will be based on two outright margin contracts. Okay, so far uh, these are the questions that we have. Uh, so then the next part, I want to uh, uh, highlight some of the things that, uh, that uh, what should we do next. Uh, okay, so if you are interested to open a trading account with us after hearing uh, what I share today, and if you like you have sufficient knowledge or the basic knowledge to start trading the uh, crude oil, you can actually uh, open an account with us uh, via online. Okay, so you can just scan this, uh, scan this website, uh, scan this barcode, and it will bring you to a website where there's instruction on the first page on how to open uh, account. So as I mentioned previously, account opening is free. Like there's no any fee for that. Okay. Then the next thing, if you are not ready yet, okay, you can actually register for a demo account. Demo account to practice paper trading on our platform, Philip Nova. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, these are some of the uh, screenshot of the, our platform. Okay, we have more than ninety technical indicators, and we have a market that two market that uh, is the one on the on the desktop on, on the monitor one on the top right. Okay, you can see all the price or all the level. You can trade from there as well. Okay, some of the broker doesn't produce a market that for you to do scalping or you do uh, short term trading. Okay. This market app is very useful when you're doing scalping. Scalping meaning to say if you just want to get like three, four ticks, three, four ticks or three, four points from the market, okay, you can do it through scalping instead of you entering every time opening order ticket to place to key in a price, it will be not so efficient. Okay, if you want to explore how to use this platform, you can really register or you can scan the barcode. Okay, uh, barcode. So this platform, uh, but one thing, few things thing is that. This demo account is a 15 minute delay in data, market data, and it's only available for one month. It's only free for one month. Okay. So uh do and if you want to register another demo account, you have to use an email email address. Okay. So just take note on that. But definitely it's, it will be a good opportunity to test out your strategy, those strategy that you have in the uh that have learned so far, or any on uh, any other strategy you have learned from other Google as well. Then next thing, ah, next thing is our ongoing promotion for this NYMEX micro WTI crude oil. Okay, so uh, as mentioned in my first webinar, crude oil actually has three uh, contract size. The largest is the standard crude oil. Then we have mini crude oil, and we have uh, micro WTI crude oil. So currently we are doing promotion on the micro WTI crude oil. Okay. So the micro WTI crude oil uh, will be three USD, three USD commission. You need to say enter three USD, out three USD, so which six USD around trade. And if you compare this rate to other broker, it will be the lowest. Uh, it'll be lowest compared to other broker. And this promotion will be for year long promotion. Meaning to say it will start from three January means early this year until thirty first December. So for one year, client will enjoy this uh low, low rate of uh USD three. Then after that, you will go back to the to the uh board rate next year, 
we will go back to the board rate of uh, around uh, USD six, if not mistaken, USD six. Huh? Okay. Uh, for other micro products as well, such as Comex, Comex is also USD three, and China N fifty is USD five promotional rate. Okay. If you are, if you all are uh, any of you are interested to trade this micro product, and also one thing to highlight that micro product is the lowest margin, uh, lowest ten times lowest than the standard contract. So for nine to be three. The crude oil margin will be the lowest, like 10 times lower than, uh, 10 times lower than the standard contract. So for those of you have small capital or just want to, as a beginner, just want to test out, don't have to uh, pump in so much uh, capital yet. So you can, I would recommend you all to use uh, trade the NYMEX WTI, uh, sorry, the NYMEX micro, micro contract, okay? WTI micro contract. Okay, uh, if you want to know more on the margin requirement, you can, uh, can contact us or any representative from the future. Okay, then for the upcoming webinar on part three, I will cover technical analysis. So it will be uh, three weeks from now, 5 April, uh, 5, 5 April on Tuesday as well, same time, 8.30 to 9.30. Then the registration link to part three will be available next week and the email invitation will be sent out. Okay, so just watch out for this email and uh, hopefully we'll see you all again from the, uh, for the technical analysis and also uh, if you are if any of you wish to uh, understand more of, of, uh, or want to open an account but don't know not sure how to open an account you can always contact me by uh, uh, through email or uh, contact our uh, email or contact point to our office la, right? to my office la, okay then uh, we have one more question question here on uh, from the participants. Okay, so what is the trend of crude oil price going to be if the peace negotiation is successful? Okay, so once the peace negotiation is successful, and now currently because Ukraine and Russia is uh, negotiating, right? But it's quite still very, uh, still there's no uh, light at the end of the tunnel yet. So everything is still blur. But if this is successful, we can expect the crude oil prices to revert back to the price before the Russian, uh, before the invasion started, which is around 80 to 90 USD. Currently it's like 110 to 120 USD. So you will revert back to 80, 90 USD, okay? And also we can expect, uh, but definitely the Russian sanction uh, will be a bit complicated there because most of the sanction already started. And also we want to see uh, whether this outcome will benefit, uh, benefit all the party Okay, so uh, it's quite complicated. I cannot tell you uh, what is the outcome uh, of this negotiation, but I can tell you roughly it will go back to the price of uh, crude oil, 80 to 90 USD. Okay, a bit uh, based uh, provided all factors remain constant. Maybe uh, meaning to say there's no like uh, elevation of COVID cases or new trade away coming out. Okay, <laughs> because the main main problem with uh, crude oil is the de demand la. because now uh, regardless COVID high, uh, regardless how uh, COVID are uh, still a lot of cases around the world because this Omicron strain is not so uh, not so harmful. So economy, uh, most of the major economies continue to be open. La. So that's why there are more de economic activity and more demand on crude oil prices. Yeah, so basically that. La. Okay, so uh, if you have no more question, then uh, we will end today's uh, webinar. I hope to see you again on the on the uh, part three webinar. And if you have uh, any question, if you have further question, we will you can email to us. Or if you want to arrange a uh, one-to-one coaching, you also can uh, you also can contact our representative. Okay, so thank you for attending this webinar and have a good night. Hey, thank you. Bye bye.